The American Alligator Mysterious, prehistoric, feared One of the most recognizable animals in the world. These creatures are rather famous, but most people know very little about this iconic reptile's lifestyle and behaviors. On this adventure, my goal was to locate and safely remove one of these incredible animals from an area where it did not belong and bring you up close and personal with her incredible features. This species can be found across much of the southeastern United States, making its home in swamps, creeks, rivers, and lakes across that part of the country. In today's expedition, we were exploring in central Florida, a state which truly offers the perfect environment for these massive reptiles to thrive. All right, guys, so we're here right now with Tyler. Uh, Tyler is a professional alligator raiser and capturer. And we're actually in some private land right now. We're removing a nuisance gator. So the person that lives here does not want the gator on their land. Uh, we're using this little contraption here. It's just some chicken on a string. Uh, we think that this gator hasn't eaten in a while. So if you want to explain how, how this works. All it is really is paracord to the chicken. And then when the gator um, takes the bait and it swims away, this rope will just follow it and then it doesn't harm the animal. Uh, I learned this from one of my good friends that ca uses it to catch crocodiles down in Belize. So okay. um, it works pretty good. Sweet. But the only problem is if the temperature is not right and he's not feeding, then it might not take the bait. But since the water's pretty low, we should be able to find it. So. Okay, and we are operating under permits right right now. So we're, we yeah. we're not just coming out here and grabbing it. So if, you, if you're in Florida, you can't just walk up and grab a gator. You have to be permitted like Tyler is. So this person, just so people have some context, they kept these gators for about 40 years as pets, right? Yep. And they just, the person died and they do not want them anymore. But you've been back here and you've caught several already. And this is that last one, I'm trying to get out. To find this last remaining individual, we hiked around several small gator holes, searching for fresh tracks and slide marks. Finally, we turned up some promising signs. All of the grass. Really? All right, so if you look down here, there's this little pond. Now, this is what we call a gator hole because during the dry season, which is right now, they will dig these out, they'll fill up with rainwater, and this is where the alligator will live. Now, gator holes aren't just important for the alligator survival. They're important for the ecosystem as a whole because things like wading birds, fishes, and turtles will also use these gator holes as refuge during the dry season. So we think he's actually in here. Tyler just found a gator slide. So if you've got a pole, we're going to poke around and see if he's in here and see if we can get him out. So there could be an eight foot gator under this and we could not see him at all. Something's moving under there. Oh, you got him? Oh man. Oh, looky there. Oh my gosh. The good news was that we had found the gator. The bad news? She was much bigger than anticipated, tipping the scales at an estimated weight of over 200 pounds in a length of over 8 feet. That is very near the maximum size for a female gator, and we had been expecting her to weigh considerably less because she presumably hadn't been eating enough to gain weight. Because of this, we wanted to remove the animal from the hole in a way that was safe for both parties involved. Luckily, Tyler had a plan. Yep, wrap it real good yeah don't let it go around your hands though because if uh the gator runs then i don't want to get pulled in yeah. all right so what we're going to do to make sure we get this thing out of here safely is we're going to snare it so he has a staff over there he's going to kind of provoke it it's hopefully going to stick its head up and we're going to put it on this rope now we did forget the good rope this is the paracord but we'll make it work so what we want to do is get this around his top jaw so we have a secure point and then we're just going to pull him out of this little Gator hole here, get him on here to the dry ground, where he can kind of present things and then safely get him out. Now in theory, this plan sounded easy. All I had to do was get a rope around the gator's jaw and we could pull her out. However, she had a very different plan in mind. Oh man, there he is. After several minutes of getting trounced by the huge female, we finally secured a top jaw rope and were able to haul the behemoth onto land. There we go. That is a gator. All right. Now that she was on the muddy bank, 
we had to try and close her jaws with electrical tape and transport her to higher ground. And so, I jumped on the back of the swamp monster and held on with all my might. Once we had her powerful jaws secured, I was finally able to begin presenting her amazing creature features to the camera. All right, so what you can see right now is these osteoderms right here, they're solid. So osteoderm just means outside bone. And these are like little solar panels. So when this thing sits out in the sunlight like this, there's little blood vessels near the surface of these. And so what she'll do is she'll just sit out and she'll kind of absorb the sunlight, right? So this thing is black, it's like a big solar panel. So gators can sit in these gator pools during the dry season like this for months without a meal if they need to because they can absorb so much of their energy from the sun. So that's a property of these gators that's called ectothermic. That's how they absorb the energy. Now as you can see, getting her out of here, this is a huge animal and her tail is absolutely solid muscle. So the head is what we were more worried about, but also this tail here, uh, it's, it's very flat, it's like a rudder. So underwater, she was whipping that around, trying to get away from us. But on land, a tail with this much power behind it could actually break bone. So what we're gonna do now is we're trying to get her up to an area where it's a little bit less slippery, she's a little farther away from the water, and I'll tell you more about their bite force and their teeth up there. This is huge, oh my gosh. I've never worked with animals big before, this is awesome. They're just solid muscle. Marty, remember how big the other ones are? Oh, yeah. I'm thinking Fair to than... myself, these aren't that big. Really? Compared these are to small. the other ones. Oh my gosh. Alright, who's getting the head? The next step was to carry her to higher ground, where I could mount her safely and all restraints could be removed. And like the other parts of the plan, carrying a scaly, squirming mass of pure muscles up a muddy embankment is also quite a challenge. Yeah, I wish you could grab that idea. <laughs> Alright. I guess we could have dragged her. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty slick. Yeah, hold on. Oh, I'm not. Whoa. Oh, that's the blooper. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Man. That's a workout. Whoa. Look at you. She is huge. Holy cow. All right guys, so right here, we have live alligator. So she's completely free. The rope is off, the tape is off. This is a huge American alligator. Now these guys are laughing at me when I said huge. She's probably what, 10 feet long, eight feet long? I say eight. Eight, eight feet long. long. So for me, this is absolutely enormous. And yeah, for most of you, this is a huge gator as well. But here in Florida, an alligator can get up to 16 feet long and weigh over a thousand pounds. That's absolutely crazy. Now when you're on top of an animal this big, you gotta be careful at all times. So what I'm doing, I have her hips up, up under mine so that she can't scoot backwards. And I have my hands pretty much firmly planted to keep her head down. Now an interesting thing about alligators is they actually can't open their mouths with that much force. All their muscle is devoted to bringing that mouth down and they can deliver an extremely powerful bite. So a full-size American alligator has been recorded biting of over 2,000 pounds per square inch of force. That is the third strongest bite force in the animal kingdom, only behind the saltwater crocodile and the Nile crocodile. But actually, pound for pound, the American alligator is the strongest biter in the animal world. So her eyes and her mouth are both above the water so she can see and smell any potential prey items. Now when lots of people talk about the American alligator, you hear lots of horror stories. You hear about the people that have been attacked. Uh, not too long ago, there was actually a Florida boy who was killed by an alligator. But these guys are not mindless killers. These guys are actually extremely important to the health of the ecosystem. So, alligators are what's known as a keystone species, which means that the health of the entire ecosystem depends on the survival of this top predator. So these guys prey on all kinds of different animals below them once they get to this size. This thing could take prey as small as a raccoon or as large as a deer or a Burmese python if it wanted to. So what that does is help maintain the energy levels below it. So this is at the very, very peak of the ecosystem here, an absolute alpha predator. Uh, so this helps maintain that ecosystem balance. Now what I'm about to do here is just pull my hands back and so hopefully she'll open her mouth. You gonna go tap her on the nose to get her open up a little bit? Should we show off her teeth? Or you think she'll explode? She'll be fine. Mm. She's very tired right now, so that's a good point. Right now we have her very tired out. I would not just go jump on a random wild alligator because they will not uh, just sit here like this while you play with them. But hopefully you can see 
the under there in her mouth. There we go, open up a little bit. She has about 90 teeth. Now, I would, sh <laughs> she might open up a little bit wider, yeah, get that front angle. So she has about 90 teeth in there. And those are, they're extremely strong. They replenish constantly throughout their lifetime. So alligators, very similarly to predators like sharks, have these teeth and there's multiple rows of teeth and they just keep replenishing over and over. So the alligator will lose its teeth and regrow its teeth several times throughout its life. But these teeth are not meant to really shred. These teeth are meant to crush. So this alligator can bite through bone, it can bite through skin, through muscle, no problem at all. But they actually cannot chew. So an alligator cannot chew whatsoever. Their teeth are not made for that. What they actually do is they do what's called a death roll. Uh, so you can see them, they'll tuck their arms kind of to their side and they'll just roll through the water and they'll tear off chunks of meat and swallow them whole. Now because it swallows its meals whole, this alligator has some insanely strong stomach acids. So they found all kinds of crazy things in the stomachs of alligators. They even found things like hammers or nails that these guys have eaten because they were shiny. Maybe they, they, man, maybe these alligators thought they were fish. But this is an awesome animal and you guys can see just how huge this, this animal is. Now of course this isn't as big as they can get, but this is just about as big as I would feel comfortable holding. So you also see that this skin right here is pretty puffy right there. Now that's not just, that's not fat. Uh, these alligators are pretty much muscle. What this is, is actually a throat patch. So when these guys are ready to gorge, when they have killed their meal and they rip off one of those big flesh chunks, they can just expand this and swallow huge amounts of meat per bite. So this is basically a T-Rex, what you're seeing here. These guys have been alive since the time of the dinosaurs. And they will probably continue to live long after humans are gone. But look at that eye right there. One last thing I want to show you is it's called the nictitating membrane. So if we close her eye and let her open it, you can see that there is that little sliding membrane they just want to run across. And what, that's like goggles. So when these guys are underwater, they have that transparent membrane that will slide across their eyes. It's like goggles for them. It keeps them safe from all kinds of things that would happen underwater when they're eating. All right. Wow, that is just a gorgeous animal. That's an incredible encounter. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna get some shots of the different things I talked about, the osteoderms, the eyes, the teeth, and the tail. Uh, get some B-roll of that. And then we're gonna pack her up and send her to a safe location where she can survive and hopefully grow up to raise an alligator family of her own. Now. now she's been really great. Thankfully she was not too irritated with us as we worked with her. Because if she wanted to, she could have easily thrown me off at any time. When you're working with an animal like this, it's all about just getting them to calm down and get them controlled. You can't really, I mean, if the gator wanted to, it could have thrown me off at any time. There is no restraining something like this. You just gotta get it, I guess, relaxed enough that it does not try to throw you off. So she has been an amazing subject today. This was just an absolutely phenomenal animal kind of to have. As much as I wanted to interact with such a beautiful animal all day long, she needed to be transported to a new location where she would live a long and happy life. So, we loaded her up and took her to check out a new habitat. Alright everyone, well we got her out right here. Uh, as you can see, we're in a much more natural area. Uh, this is actually a little breeding pond. Because this animal was basically raised in captivity, it was a pet for quite a while. Uh, we can't actually release it into the wild completely because it would be dependent on humans for food. But uh, what we've done, we've brought it here to a breeding facility. So she will live here and she will produce eggs, which will um, help produce sustainably sourced gator material such as food or hide. So she's been a joy to work with. So we're just going to jump off and she'll probably take off. And that is a free gator. Well, everybody, thank you so much for checking out this episode. I really hope that you enjoyed and that you learned something new about the American alligator. Lots of people don't realize that these animals are extremely important to ecosystem health. They are top predators. And if you do see them in the wild, uh, know that they are not mindless killers. These guys are doing just as much to help the ecosystem as any conservation group would. So she has been great this episode. Please make sure to check out the rest of my videos. I have content on all kinds of different animals that you can find. If you want to learn more about the animals and why they're so important to the ecosystems, uh, that's kind of what I make videos about. But this was an awesome adventure, guys. I want to thank you for joining me, and I will see you on the next episode. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out. <laughs>